Good morning and welcome to Ballon Baptist Online. Today we're concluding our summer series, so it's a final chance to think, reflect and pray. So we'll start with a thought for the day and then Steph will lead us in prayer, helping us to pray for ourselves as individuals. Back in March, I remember waking up in the morning and hearing the birds singing and thinking, I've never heard this before. I stepped out into my back garden in the evening and there were so many stars in the sky and I thought, I've only ever really seen about two. And the sunsets were absolutely amazing. And it was almost like God had got his paintbrush out and had touched it all up a little bit for us during lockdown so we had things that we could just marvel at. But the other thing I noticed was, was people. People and their, their kindness and their love. And the sense of community that came about and people wanting to join in with delivering food parcels or taking people's prescriptions to them or, or going out and doing a bit of shopping. People who were just desperate to show love and, and to help. In our street, we have a, a WhatsApp group and people would go shopping for their food and they'd come back and they'd say, hey, I bought too many oranges just because they were on offer and they're really lovely. I'm going to leave them on the doorstep. Come and help yourself. And then I'd walk around Balham on my hours exercise every day and I'd find these very strange kind of handmade things in people's front gardens full of toys and books and, and DVDs and they'd say, please help yourself in London. This was like really strange, but it was amazing to see. And as Steve and I kind of talked about it, there was all this talk about people's front lines and people serving the people on their front lines, which is the very thing that we've been talking about here in church for years. And here it was happening. It made us realize that actually the church doesn't have the monopoly, uh, as we sometimes like to think, on kindness and love. People do it because they want to do it. It says in the Bible that we're all created in God's image. And so it's understandable, therefore, that people have got this kindness and this love and this deep sense of desire to want to be in community with other people. So why is it different then? Why, as Christians, are we any different? In Matthew 5, it talks about how we are called to be salt and light. And in the message version, it talks about how there are God colours and God flavours. And as I looked out over those times, whether it was in creation, uh, whether it was in, with people and their attitudes and their hearts, the place was littered with God flavours and God colours. And it was just pure joy to watch people pull together in that way. But as a Christian, it goes a bit further than that. As a Christian, I believe that I am part of a much bigger story than the story that I am able to write for myself. Evidenced in the fact that I'm sitting here right now in a church in South London, this was never going to be a part of my story, but it was a part of God's story, and I wouldn't change it for anything. You see, when I'm a part of his story, I have an incredible sense of purpose, I have a great sense of hope and a sense of self-worth. When I consult with the author of creation, the one who holds the paintbrush, the one who holds the pencil, who's writing the story of my life, my feet go places I never would have taken them, or they take me places I never would have gone. And I have conversations with people that just would never have happened. And in those moments when you know that God has taken a hold of you and used you for his purposes, there's no greater sense at all. And when I'm in his story, I have a freedom. I have a freedom to be me, the me that he created to be, the freedom to uh, fulfill the potential, the huge potential that he's placed in each one of us but I could never realize that on my own. Sometimes I think he must look at me a bit like I'm paddling around in the shallow end of a pool and say, come on, Lisa, I've made you to be so much more than this. And yet I choose to paddle in that safety area. 
As we come out of lockdown, I wonder what God colours and God flavours that you have seen in your community, in your house, uh, in your workplace, on your Zoom calls. And I would encourage you to fan those into flame because soon the traffic, well, it's already in Balham, got terrible, but soon that noise will just drown out all those things, the busyness of life. We'll lose sight of those colours. We'll lose sight of those flavours. And we have, at this moment in time, a unique opportunity as church community, as community here in Balham, as individuals, to fan these colours and these flavours into flame and to just turn them into something wonderful. So take a look around you. What have you seen grow during this time? What wonderful flavours have you tasted, maybe? What wonderful colours have you seen? The God colours and the God flavours. Ask God. If you can't see it, ask God, and he will show you. And he will show you because he has a much bigger perspective on our world, on our society, on our community, on our church, on our homes, on our lives. And he knows the potential that he has placed in us. Beautiful Lord, wonderful Saviour, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. I'm captured by your holy calling, set me apart, I know you're joy. is a prayer for ourselves. Heavenly Father, thank you for your unconditional and everlasting love. Thank you, Lord, for how you care for us on a daily basis and how you supply all our needs. You are a loving and faithful God that accepts us despite our many weaknesses and sin. We are weak, but your spirit gives us strength. We are not perfect, but Lord, we know you are. We sometimes struggle with doubt and give in to sin. Lord, we are thankful that you are a God who forgives and restores us when we fall and that you are always there to lift us up again. You came into the world not to condemn us, but to save us. Thank you. As the country reopens and people gradually return to a semblance of normality, 
Lord, would you watch over those who find themselves with no jobs to return to? Would you stay close to them, helping them to endure any hardships, be it financial or family difficulties? Lord Jesus, we pray for those who have lost loved ones in the pandemic, in particular, those in our church family. Lord, will you put your loving arms around them to protect and comfort them? Thank you, Lord, for being our refuge and our strength. We give you thanks, Lord, for your faithfulness, for being all-powerful and all-knowing. We rest in the knowledge that you are always in control. We place our trust in you because we know that you love us always. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>